When you start the recording, you have about five or six minutes to complete the test. The test requires uh, ten thrusts in each direction. Those are the minimum requirements. Uh, but the test will automatically stop at 30 thrusts. So once you start the test, there is no big rush to start moving the patient's head. After you've got a new grip and the patient's clenched their jaw, um, then you can begin the head thrust test. There is audio, audible and visual feedback from the computer. So if the thrust is within acceptable velocity range, then the background of the test screen will turn green and you will see, you'll hear a ding sound from the computer. If the head thrust is too slow, then the background will turn yellow with a dong sound. And if the thrust is too fast, then the background will turn red with a donk sound. So with the audible clues, you can focus on doing your head thrusts without worrying about the computer or screen. It is recommended that you randomize the head thrust so the patient does not anticipate. There's a counter on the top left corner of the screen which tells you how many thrusts you have had to the left or the right. And that indicator will turn green when the minimum required thrusts have been completed. Some practitioners like to bring the head to the center and then go out and that is still possible. Just bring the head back to the center position very slowly and then you can go out. Um, some folks think this is uh, easier on the patient's neck so they like to do that. At the end of 30 thrusts total, the test will automatically end. You can record the IMAX video for the entire duration of the tests to play back at a later time. Um, and if you want to see the analysis, click on Analyze. We'll give you the uh, analysis of the VHIT test.